So a recent survey shared that 80% of the people who were interviewed were more worried about running out of money than they were dying. By creating better money habits, that doesn't have to be the case. And today you're going to learn insight to help ensure you're not going to have to worry about running out of money. Cultivating good money habits is so important to securing your financial future. Now, on the blog for today's episode, I dive into a lot of great money habits. But on this podcast, I want to share with you three uncommon habits that can dramatically impact your future. And I don't think you can find them anywhere on the universe. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Annette Ba'u, host of the Wealth Inside and Out podcast and founder of The Millionaire Insider. My mission is to help you simplify the money game so you can create a financially secure and fulfilled life without having to have a PhD or spend countless hours on your finances. You're going to learn how to think like a millionaire, stop worrying about money and wondering if your financial house is truly in order and instead spend your time doing what you love. With over three decades advising seven, eight, and even nine figure millionaires, and now joining that elite group, I'm in a unique position to help you make the best financial choices so you can create a secure financial future and retirement you love. This is the Wealth Inside and Out podcast. If you're not sure about your next financial step, I encourage you to take our assessment. You can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. Our free guide today is our Millionaire Mindset Guide. If you want one of the best resources on how millionaires think, what they do differently, and everything about them, you're going to love this insight. It's over 35 years of advising and researching wealthy clients that's gone into this. You can access it at themillionaireinsider.com forward slash SMMG. Again, S-M-M-G. As I mentioned, over 35 years researching millionaires, it's got the A to Z. And it's going to just teach you really how to think, how they think differently, and really ones that are fulfilled and wealthy, not just wealthy. So again, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash S-M-M-G. All materials and intellectual property are copywritten by themillionairesteries.com. The information we provide is not intended to replace any advisor or specialist or to provide you any investment, financial, tax, retirement, planning, or healthcare advice. You need to get that from a registered investment advisor. All participants agree to hold millionaireseries.com and its affiliates harmless for results achieved or not achieved. So let's look at three uncommon money habits. The first one is improve your wealth barometer. Your worth barometer, which is a combination of your belief and self-esteem, is absolutely critical. And it's something that I have dove into in a lot of my episodes. I will link to episode three at themillionaireinsider.com forward slash three, where you can learn all about it. I'm not going to dive into it here today because you can go listen to that episode. But in my 35 years of advising millionaires and researching them, it has proven to be the number one indicator of a person's results, including if they are succeeding or they are learning or they are failing, all right? The worth barometer influences your wealth barometer. And this is really important. This took me years to figure out because I could not figure out the connection because what you'd see is that there are a lot of millionaires who have very low worth barometers and they have a lot of money. But to have a fulfilled and wealthy life, you've got to have a healthy worth barometer. When we have a healthy worth barometer, we show up and do the work that's required to get the results we want. I mean, it's really interesting. Like regardless of how we feel, we are in the arena doing the required action, taking the steps we need to to get the results we want, whether it's with our health, whether it's with our money, our business, or all of the above. We work on our inner game, which includes our money, our mindset, money blocks, possibly money stories, goals, and our vision. That's all our inner game. And then we work on our outer game, which is more the financial aspects of it, the investments, retirement, and the estate planning. That's wealth inside and out. The inside is really more your inner game of your mindset, your money blocks, your money stories. And then the outer game is really taking action and bringing it to fruition. And both are critical. 
When we have a healthy worth barometer, we take time to create a plan and then we do the work to implement and update it as needed. As compared to when we don't, we do what we feel like doing. And we'll dive into that primal brain in a minute, but it just wreaks havoc on every aspect of our life. We take the time to create a spending plan so we know what different sources of income we have and how much income we have, as well as our spending plan, how much we are spending each month. Then we monitor it. We make decisions to ensure we're going to be okay and we can enjoy our life not only now, but in the future. Your worth barometer, in my opinion, is your lifeline to success. And it is one of the most important money habits you can develop because it influences your wealth barometer. I would say hopefully most people listening would like to have a fulfilled and wealthy life. There are a lot of people who have miserable wealthy lives. Doesn't sound very fun, but a fulfilled and wealthy life. The only way you can have that is if you have a healthy worth barometer. So that's number one. The second one is you want to rein in those impulse decisions. Ooh, boy. Most experts would agree that we have more stress in our lives than we've ever had before. So whenever we find a reprieve, many of us want it, right? Especially when it comes to areas that can cause us stress like money or finances, right? And it's helpful to know and understand this when we are working on impulse decisions and dopamine hits. Until we train our subconscious mind, which is basically our primal brain, which is also known as a child or toddler brain, because that's what it acts like, it's going to run the show. And if you just think about a toddler that hasn't been fed or they're in a store and they want their way, how do they show up? You know, they start throwing a fit until they get it. Now, our subconscious mind, which is millions of years old, is there to protect us. It's there to conserve calories, conserve energy. You know, if a tiger is going to attack us, we've got to be on our guard. If we are exerting too much energy and we are consuming calories and food, could be a problem. We could die because we may not be able to get food for a period of time. So there's definitely a purpose for our primal brain, but it's not as prevalent as it was when we were living in caves. Now, our impulses to overspend, overeat, overdrink, oversex, or really any overindulgence is more about unprocessed emotions, which are caused by an out of control primal brain. To effectively manage our money, we've got to do the work regardless of how we feel in the moment because most of us are not going to feel like doing it, right? Like, oh, I really want to sit down. Like yesterday I was working on taxes. Oh my gosh. It's just so overwhelming. I don't dislike doing accounting and doing all that, but boy, it is work. And I can understand how somebody's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. I didn't feel like doing it. And I had promised my CPA, we try to at least have out of the eight tax returns we have to do every year, at least have a few of them done before April 15th, because some of our partnerships dictate so much about our other elements of our business, meaning we can't do our personal returns until we have some of our K-1s and all the distributions and all that. It's required. I didn't feel like doing it, but I did it. And That's where I want you to get is you don't feel like doing it, but you still do it because you know that in the bigger picture, it's important. So just to recap, to effectively manage your money, we've got to do the work regardless of how we feel in the moment. To do that, we've got to be making decisions from our prefrontal cortex, which is more of our newer brain, our conscious mind. We got to bring it to the party. Taking the time to create a plan and a budget and then implement it and update it as it's required means that our prefrontal cortex has to be a part of that. One of the best ways to manage your primal brain is to quiet it down and to get in control of your thinking, meaning most people overthink. They overanalyze and they overthink. Effective strategies to quiet our mind include both primary and secondary strategies. So primary strategies is where I want you to begin. And this includes focused breathing and silent meditation. I recommend you start with focused breathing because it's a lot easier. Silent meditation I've been doing for 30 years, it's hard. It's still hard because our mind wants to wander and it can be a challenge if you're not used to it. 
but I want to do a focused breathing exercise with you just so you can see it. And the power of it is unbelievable. I mean, you do this consistently, you're going to see yourself showing up better. You're going to see yourself doing things you don't feel like doing. I encourage you to put your feet flat on the ground. You can put your hands either face down on your thighs if you need more support or face up if you need more receiving. If you feel any anxiety, any stress, any fear facing down, that's going to ground you. Facing up is going to more open you up. It's going to open you up to more possibilities. It's going to open you up to just more of what you can attract. But if you're feeling really nervous, you need to calm yourself down. You need that support. So don't make it a judgment call. Just kind of tap into what you feel is right. And you can always change it. This is just one time. Breathe in and out through your nose through this entire exercise. So you breathe into the count of eight, hold it for eight, and then release for 16. I encourage you to do this exercise when you wake up in the morning and then right when you go to bed based on where your brain waves are. I want you to go through three to four to five cycles of that. Then what I want you to do is throughout the day when you're doing your power hours, and I'll link to the power hour episode too, in between your power hours, I encourage you to do this focused breathing exercise. It's just so powerful and it's going to ground you. It's going to help you to set your intention and it's going to help you get to another power hour. Power hours are basically 50 to 70 minutes of laser focus where you're really focused on doing the most important activity. And you should be doing those even if you're retired because there are activities that need to be done. And the nice thing about getting your power hours done is that those activities lead to the results you want. And so it's so powerful, even if it's just paying attention to your money, reviewing your spending, reevaluating your estate plan, whatever it may be. The second component are secondary strategies. And these include guided meditation, where you might be doing a meditation that's guided by someone else, yoga, especially either like a slow flowing vinyasa or restorative yin. I love restorative yin. I do like 40 minutes of restorative yin every morning, along with 20 minutes of kundalini, kind of like my grounding. Silent walks can be really powerful, positive prayer. And then hiking. Spending time in nature is a great way for many of us to slow down and to pause between our thoughts. You got to figure out what works for you. But what I want you to do is get to the point where you can identify when you're feeling triggered and that you don't allow your primal brain to take over and kind of push the pedal on the gas and have you respond. If you find yourself reacting or you feel like reacting, now initially you're going to probably be reacting, but as you get more in control of your primal brain and you're in the driver's seat, you're going to feel the urge to say something or do something and be able to pause. And I will say it's more difficult with close relationships, probably your partner, it's the most difficult or your kids if they really are driving you crazy. Again, just be aware of that. I want you to really focus on not distracting yourself, just feeling the emotion. Many of us were taught to distract ourselves, to avoid that feeling. And a large part of our problem is the fact that we do everything to avoid a feeling. And what ends up happening is we just push it down. And then when it does come to surface, it's a big problem. But just start noticing your emotions as they show up. And some people find it really helpful to describe them. What I love to do is be like a third eye, like I'm observing myself and I'm like talking to someone else like, isn't that funny? I mean, what's bothering her? Look at how that's showing up. And, you know, you just kind of make it a game. Some other people say, describe it to a Martian, whatever works for you. But you might say like, my heart is racing. I'm perspiring. I feel pressure on my chest, but I'm okay. I'm living through it, right? Like we make things such big deals where you're like, okay. And see, the more we can train ourselves to where we get nervous, and we might get nervous because we're going to meet our financial advisor and it makes us nervous, or we might get nervous because we have to review our budget, or we might get nervous because we have to make warm calls in our business. As we get comfortable being uncomfortable and we see we're going to be okay, we train it to knowing, oh, yeah, remember I did that before and I'm going to be okay. So it's so, so important. When we avoid the emotion versus experiencing it, as I mentioned, it doesn't cure the issue. Instead, what it does is reinforce to allow your primal brain to show up how it wants to. So it's really important that we've got to feel all emotions and be able to pause and choose how we want to show up and respond. And the more we can get in the driver's seat with our money and our lives, 
It's going to change the entire trajectory of our experience as well as our financial future and how secure it is. What you're going to find as you do this work is then when you get, say, for instance, into a situation where it triggers you, maybe it's a fight with your partner or you get upsetting news, you have some problem with your friend, maybe your friend's been hospitalized or your child, there's some issue, you're going to be so much better off and able to feel the emotion and not feel like you have to have a knee-jerk response. Like you can process it and react how you want to react versus reacting like you normally would, where you freak out, you yell at them, you go spend money, you go drink, whatever it may be. What you're going to also find is that you're not going to be distracting or suppressing that emotion by overindulgent behaviors, and specifically ones that wreak havoc on your finances. Obviously, over drinking, overeating, over sexing, none of those are ideal. Done in excess, it can cause serious problems. But overspending or even over earning, where you're just earning and you're not taking into account all the other aspects of life. Those things are so critical. The end game is financial security now as well as in retirement. And so it's critical. So number two is reigning in impulse decisions and it is equally important. Number three is increasing dopamine drips versus hits. Dopamine is the pleasure feel good chemical. We get it when we do something we enjoy. Some get it from running. I get it from hiking or chatting with friends. Others get it from drinking, eating, having sex, spending money. Some behaviors are healthy and others aren't. One of the things that I have realized in my research is that earning and spending money is possibly one of the biggest dopamine hits you can have. And what ends up happening is a person makes money and it feels so good. And then they spend money in their business to make more or they spend money in their personal life to look like they have money. Now, if you've never been a top producer, I'm just going to give you the kind of the lowdown. I was top in the world for two years in a row. I mean, that's big, right? And you would have thought I was like the smartest person that ever lived. But actually, it was just I made a lot of money. Over to Europe, penthouse. I mean, it was just incredible. Handmade, custom yadro. I mean, it was just crazy. And everyone talks to you like you're the smartest person that ever lived. It's like, no, I just made a lot of money. But then when I achieved my net worth goal, years later, which was 18.9 times that income year, no one was telling me how smart I was. No one was congratulating me. Why? Because accumulating wealth is more of a drip as compared to a hit. And the problem with hits, which is earning money and spending money, is that society rewards that. Whereas when it comes to having too much sex or over drinking or overeating, you know, for overweight, like it or not, a lot of people look down on that. I mean, I've been at so many meetings where people will be like oh, making comments about people's weight. I mean, it is just an issue for our society, as is over drinking. You know, oh my gosh, that person was so drunk. They were standing up, they were doing this, that. It's not accepted. Whereas when you over earn or you overspend, it is. Oh my gosh, look at that purse. Oh my gosh, look at that ring. Oh my gosh, look at that car, whatever it may be. So I just want you to be aware of that because. It's harder to break that habit because society is there rewarding you. So just to kind of recap, so when you have a hit, that's more making money and spending money. And it's much more externally driven because we get a lot of accolades from the outside. When we are accumulating wealth, that's much more of a dopamine drip. And it's much more internal, meaning you've got to get your satisfaction and you've got to get your confirmation from an internal feeling. And for some people, that's hard. What you find is that that's what gives you peace of mind. That's what gives you the security. That's what ensures that you're going to have a bright financial future, a secure financial future you love. So you just got to be aware of that. And you got to understand that until you're aware of these things, I can understand if you don't have them as habits. But now that you know, you can start working at them each day. And as you get into the driver's seat of your life, you're going to become more capable and aware and you're be able to identify those drips and hits and work to get to where you're more internally driven so you can have more drips as compared to hits. With practice, you can become more internally driven than externally motivated. 
the external motivation so many times leads to a broke retirement as well as financial insecurity, whereas the internal drive of a drip leads to security and a fulfilled life you love. So there you have it. In conclusion to better money habits, let's just recap. Number one, work every day to improve your wealth barometer. And this requires that you work on your worth barometer. I work on my worth barometer every day. I'm so much better than I was even two years ago. It's just an ongoing process. And I've been studying this for 40 years. So just be aware of that. Rein in those impulse decisions. You got to get in the driver's seat and engage your prefrontal rational brain. That primal toddler limbic brain is out of control and it wants to control us. We've got to get in the driver's seat and not let that happen. And then increase your dopamine drips. Got to become more internal and less of a high, like a dopamine hit from spending money, which is such a vicious cycle. Drips provide stability and allow us to accumulate well as compared to hits are all about making money and spending money. By cultivating better money habits, it's going to help you to secure your financial future as well as to achieve your goals now and in retirement. So I encourage you to start implementing these habits today so you can pave the way for a brighter financial future. And my friends, you just got to start, right? I mean, these are things that are going to happen if you don't do anything about them. But if you do, they're going to have a dramatic impact on your life. So there you have it. If you love the content of this podcast, please follow and subscribe to our channel so you get notified of episodes and also give us a five-star review and share a comment. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on taking another step to create a financially free life you love. If you're not sure about your financial future or that it's in order, or you are ready to stop worrying about money or possibly the fear of becoming a bag lady, ending up broke in retirement, or you simply are ready to know your financial house is in order so that you can have a bright financial future, please go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. And that doesn't stand for non-sufficient funds. It stands for next step finance. It's the next best step of what you need to do so you can avoid an NSF notice in your future. Again, themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. The number of women who were not broke or poor while working or married is staggering. The entire mission of the Wealth Inside and Out podcast is to ensure you have the information for you, your family, your friends, anyone who's willing to listen to it and apply it so that you can create a financially free life you love. Again, themillionaireinsider.com forward slash NSF. Until our next episode, take one action that will help you create a financially free life you love. I'm Annette Ba'u, your host. All international copyrights are reserved. Bye, friends.